Welcome back to another team building tip with Dan Talbot. We'll be right back with Dan's tip for this week, but first let's uh, say thank you to our sponsors. And we also want to acknowledge our partners. You know, these are not sponsors, but we have partnered with these two great organizations. Uh, the first is We Coach. Go to wecoachsports.org and find out how you can get involved and help promote women's coaching, women's sport. We also want to uh, acknowledge our partner, the Global Community of Women in High School Sports. Uh, go to globalcommunityofwomeninsports.org and become an ally uh, with their organization as well. So that's We Coach and the Global Community of Women in High School Sports. Now let's hear from our sponsor. We want to say thank you to Sideline Interactive. Their indoor scoring tables and video boards not only raise money for your school, but also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com for more information. Check out what their fantastic products can do for you. Okay? And that's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments and go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. You can also email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com to get started. If you're looking for a great way to display your school records or your Hall of Fame, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com. They will show you how to sell your tickets online, how to scan the attendees that come to your games, how to collect your revenue, and every step of the way, you're going to have a dedicated client success manager providing hands-on support. Hometown Ticketing can also show you how to sell tickets for things like dances or theater and music uh, performances, even graduation. Go to hometownticketing.com and start selling your tickets digitally. That's hometownticketing.com. We want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to Gipper.com and see how athletic directors are creating world-class marketing content for their school's social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device, and you don't need any design experience. Go to Gipper.com, start creating custom-branded content for your school's social media channels. That's Gipper.com. We also want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. They sponsor the Athletic Director Toolbox segment of our regular podcast. Go to athleticsurveys.com and see how they can show you how to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. We use surveys for parents, for kids, for coaches at our schools, and the information that came back was almost always positive, and it will be for you too. But the survey also allows that squeaky wheel parent to vent. And sometimes they'll show you a small problem that you can address and keep it from turning into a big problem because you didn't know about it because you didn't do a survey. Go to athleticsurveys.com and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. We also want to say thanks to SnapRaise. Go to snapraise.com and get away from the fundraising headaches in the past. Our coaches use SnapRaise, and it was just fantastic. And choosing the best fundraiser for you and your group is critical. The SnapRaise difference is it's easy and effective. It's safe and secure. You can track participation and progress, and it works. Go to SnapRaise.com and check out the testimonials of the thousands and thousands of dollars that they've helped schools just like yours raise. Change your fundraising game plan and start a fundraiser that works for you. Go to snapraise.com. We also want to say thanks to Final Forms. 
Final forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility. They've got reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that come with athletics. Final forms can also help your coaches with communication and attendance and even help with their own certification management. And for you as an athletic director, final forms can help with eligibility and with rosters and all the reports that come across your desk. You know, it's time that you talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what final forms can do for you and your program, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with final forms. And we want to say thanks to Huddle. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams use Huddle to elevate the performance of their teams using video and analytics. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years. And as an athletic director, we were a Huddle school. Our coaches just loved the smart cameras, the online tools. Of course, they'd love the analytics, but there's so much more. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Welcome back, everyone, to Team Building Tips with Dan Talbot. This is episode number 18. For new listeners, Dan is a certified master athletic administrator. He's the senior athletic administrator for Polk County Schools here in Florida. He's also on our FIAAA board as the certification coordinator, very active at the national level as well. Uh, Dan, I know it's a busy time. So what do you have for us this week on Team Building Tips? Really, it, you know, it goes back to leadership and, and it goes back to, you know, as an athletic administrator, you know, we have such a, a pivotal role in our communities, um, not only in your community, um, but the state level and the national level as well. We have a chance to make an impact and it kind of, kind of ties into what we talked about last week about, you know, getting better. And I think this leads into what, you know, you and I have discussed is, is, you know, is leadership is getting involved. Um, you know, my superintendent, um, prior to the one I have now, I was on her executive staff committee and it was a requirement for, uh, her to be on the, you know, to be in the role that we were in, you know, it wasn't just me, it was the, you know, the person over math and science and, and all those different, you know, bits and pieces that make a district function. But she's like, you got to get involved with two communities or two you know, organizations within the community. Um, and that's when I thought about, one, you know, why? And didn't really know the why then, but I understand it now. And I'm fortunate enough. I don't know if I'm fortunate enough because, you know, I am getting tired, but I'm on the sports and special events committee within my district. And I'm, and I'm not tooting my horn by any means because anybody that knows me is, I, is I'm very private, and very humble. But I'm on the Sports and Special Events Committee, which then led me to be on the Tourist and Development Council for Polk County. Um, I'm on the FHA. I'm going to help on the sectional appeals. I'm on the AD Advisory Committee. I'm on the FACA Board of Directors, the FIAAA Board of Directors. I'm on the NIAAA State Coordinator. I am also on the NIAAA Cohort. And then this year, to talk about getting better, is I just got on the NIA Committee for Coaches Education. And people ask me, why do you do all that stuff? And I said, well, one, I have an obligation to a personal responsibility to myself to get better in my job, to make myself better because of the role I play and the people that I affect, you know, underneath me. But I can tell you this, there are some long hours and there are some days where I don't want to do those meetings. And there's some days where like right now I'm in Gainesville. I'm at the AD Athletic Director Advisory Committee in Gainesville, Florida. I got here about 11 o'clock. I visited with the FSA staff. We had a meeting till five o'clock, and then we'll we'll take we took a recess, and we'll we're making uh, we'll we'll start back tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. And we're talking about all the different changes in our spring sports that we want to see, like weightlifting from 24 qualifying to 20. Uh, and then you know I'm excited about weightlifting. Some of the changes we're doing. Um, in the state of Florida that I really think is going to bring on national attention, what we're doing for our boys and girls weightlifting sports in Florida. 
but I'm on all these different committees because um, not because I want titles or anything like that or any sorts of mean, but it has paid, it has made my life easier. It really has. I mean, the, the access to the resources that you have with all the different connections and networking that you make. I mean, you have access to unlimited information. And, and one thing I always talk about, if you want to make a change at your school as an athletic administrator, a lot of times administrators ask, um, who else is doing it? Are we the only ones? You know, and to be able to send out an email or a text message on whatever that topic may be, to have yourself an instant information and going, this county does it, this school does it, that school does it, it helps you pave the way for the things that you're trying to do. I mean, you know, perfect example is this. Our chief academic officer, um, had a little glitch in his memory and he had a training set up for last Friday for 70 uh, academic coaches within our district and he forgot to book a room and it was instantly um, called Dan so he called me and goes hey Dan I'm in a pickle I need your help you know and I need a room I need to hold 70 people. I need a venue. Can you help? I said, give me five minutes. So I picked another, I picked up the phone. I called a guy that was, that serves with me on the sports and special events committee in Polk County and said, um, Hey, I need a venue for 70 people. He goes, what day? Gave him the day, gave him the time. He says, give me two minutes. He calls back. You guys are going here at this time. I took care of you. You're done. I called back the chief academic officer in our district and I said, Hey, you're going here. Da, 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 taking care of you really said absolutely and it, and it was it was because not because of who I am it's because of the committees and the people I met that I serve with in the leadership role within our local community and so I, you know I like the fact that I, I serve in our, our local community because I think it's important especially as an athletic administrator because you know in the famous words of Lannis Robinson you know people like sports and, and it's true. And in, in, in a simple statement like that, you know, everyone loves sports, whether male, female, boys, girls, young, old, everyone loves sports. And everybody wants to interact with someone that's involved in sports. And, you know, if you're a if you're a, an athletic director in a really small town, I mean, you've got the best show in town. And, you know, and that's a very powerful position. So I, I position myself. Um, at the local level, the state level, and the national level to be a part of certain committees because it benefits not only me and not only my getting better, but it really benefits the people I serve in my district. Uh, it benefits the student athletes. It, it benefits the athletic directors at the schools. It benefits the principals, you know, because we're able to get things done, have access to information. I have the knowledge um, that I need. I mean, Jake, we hardly knew each other. And all of a sudden, you know, I was told I'm on the FIAAA board and I'm in, tar and I'm in charge of LTI. And then here you are, we're spending time in Indianapolis once a year and every weekend and get to know each other and, and work together. And, and it's been great. But I mean, I don't know if you and I, I don't know how much, because you are in Tallahassee, I'm in Central Florida, but serving in leadership roles and, and putting yourself and getting better and being on those committees as what has brings people together. And I think it's huge as an athletic administrator that you get involved and serve in leadership roles and be a part of the organizations and help out. Because the nice thing is, is when you do get involved and you do help out, you really have a voice. And you also have a voice to make positive change. But if things are going wrong, you also have a voice to help assist in changing it the way it should be. And that's a huge role. So. For all you athletic administrators out there, get involved, whether it's within your local community, um, whether it's at the state organization level or the national level, um, get involved because it does pay big dividends. It, it can make your life easier. It really, can, it really does. I love the fact that I can text people from around the country and say, hey, we just had a parent, you know, tell us this. Have you ever had this situation before? And within minutes, you get instant response. Yeah, I had something like that before. This is how we handled it, or this is how we do, you know. And, it, and it's been great. It makes your life easier. Not 
because it's because I serve and I've surrounded myself and, and every leader will tell you this, surround yourself with like-minded people. And it's really refreshing when you go to these committee meetings and you have people uh, on those committees that are like-minded like you, you really have some great dialogue and some great connections and some great ideas and, and things come out of those ideas that, that just make our life easier. Well, uh, I'm going to be using a lot of this for a, uh, a headliner uh, audio uh, to promote, you know, why, you know, the, the NIAAA is, is, is uh, so important. Um, we do that on pretty much every one of our interview episodes. I ask the ADs to share their NIAAA story and it, it's not for them to brag and they get it. Um, mm -hmm. It's for that younger AD to hear that, Hey, you know, you're, you're looking at, you know, a Dan Talbot or, you know, maybe a Jake Fontier, you know, that's been doing this for a long time. And we didn't start out with CMAAs. We didn't start out as committee chairs or, or cohort members, you know, those are happening, um, you know, well into your career, but our path was still the same. Hey, mm -hmm. do you need some help on this committee? Or, you know, hey, can I hand out uh, uh, forms at a workshop? You know, it's getting involved and taking that step. That's how those committee memberships and those, uh, you know, board positions, you know, take place. But even more important than that, and you alluded to it, it's creating that network of people that you can call when you have that challenge. Uh, because it's not if, it is when, you know, when that challenge yeah. first hits. And it started out with me just for signing up on a spreadsheet to to moderate at the national convention, to to introduce a speaker. You know, and the nice thing is when you moderate, you get to you know you can look at the spreadsheet and say, "Man, I get to introduce this person who's talking about this." I want to do that, you know, because obviously, because I was looking for things that you know I was struggling with or or things I had issues with that or or seemed to come up over and over and over again. So it's like I want to moderate for you know for her because she's talking about this and to be able to meet with them and then build that little personal connection going, Hey, I'm Dan, I'm going to, I'll be introducing you to the thing. And then you build that little personal, that's your icebreaker to meet these people and, and do those things. And because there is some powerful people in athletic administration, you know, and I'm, and I'm not tuning his arm, but you know, Lannis is well known. Uh, and, and, you know, and Lannis and I we're right next door and we joke and have, and I, and we have friendly banter, and we have a great relationship in our counties compete and everything. And, you know, I want my county and, you know, my people know when you go to Hillsborough, you, you, you win or don't come home, you know, and, and it's one of those things that we have a good time with, but I, I think just being involved and it, and it takes a while because here's the thing, everyone says they want to get involved, but how many people really do? So you got to understand that organizations and committees have been burned by people wanting to get involved. So that door is not always going to open. I mean, I've been the district athletic director for this is the, my seventh year. And I finally just got put on a national um, committee. And, and it's coaches education. It's, it, it's the one I wanted. I, I you know, because it's all about getting better and being in a leadership role. So it, it took time. Um, but I, I think, you know, but the, I will say this. The national level is great and the state level is great, but in nothing against the state organization and the national organization or the coaches organization, because, and the reason why I'm involved in the coaches organization is, is because I worked for people that said, Hey, I used to coach. And then I'm like, well, why do you make my life miserable? If you used to coach, you know, cause you, and I was a young coach. I'm like, my principal used to coach. All right, man, he makes my life miserable. And so I had these little sayings in my office, you know, be better, get better, you know, and, the, and one of the main ones is don't forget you were a coach once, you know, and don't make those coaches lives miserable because, you know, we get all those unfunded mandates sent down from, you know, the state level I do. And I'm like, how am I going to pay for this or do that? You know, but the most rewarding um, to me is the committees I serve on directly within my community. Um, the relationships I built with people that are involved in the chamber of commerce and business members, or, you know, to sit next to the person that, you know, runs Legoland and I lean over and say, 
you think we could do a middle school 3K through the Legoland Park? And he looks back and goes, oh my God, that's a great idea. Let's get together and put that up. So now we're going to, we're working on having our middle school cross country meet, one of our middle school cross country meets through Legoland. And it's, you know, that would have never happened. I would have never got into the guy that runs Legoland, he, but he sits next to me on a committee. Um, another guy to my right on the committee, he owns and runs Margaritaville in Polk County. So that needs no explanation of why that's awesome. But, it, it, you know, but it's about building those connections in your local community that can really help as an athletic administrator because you can get those things you need. And it's fun to go out in the community. I mean, I know I brag on Polk County and, or I may not brag enough, but we have 17 municipalities within our county. And so having a relationship with the city of Lakeland, the city of Winter Haven, the city of Bartow, the city of Auburndale, I have a great relationship with all those people that are over the parks and recreation department because they need me just as much as I need them. And we all serve on committees together and we make connections. The city of, you know, city of Haines City, you know, Terrell, no one better, no one better than him. And we work together to assist what, you know, if he's hosting an Ironman, he needs our all kids for volunteers. We work together. So get involved in leader, leadership positions within your community, you know, you may knock on the door and, and no one will answer, but keep knocking because someone will give you an opportunity one day. And, you know, especially at the, at the local and community level, because it will impact your school. It will impact your life as an athletic administrator, which then in turn impacts your student athletes is what, why we do what we do. Yeah. And again, I'm really glad you hit on that. Uh, it, it starts at your school level, you know, don't develop a, a bunker mentality as an AD uh, you need to get involved with performing arts. You know, you need to go to the the band performances. You need to go to the fall play. Uh, you need to make sure those teachers know that you've got their back on academic issues. Uh, get involved at the school, as Dan just mentioned, get involved in the community. And those state opportunities, if you're an FIAAA guy or gal, uh, they're out there. Okay. You just need to come to the conference and, uh, you know, Dan and I will put you in touch with somebody. Uh, well, and, and if you look at it, the, the FI AAA came to me. I mean, because the impact I was making in my community, like people are wondering why, why is the all-star cross country, all-star volleyball, all-star boys and girls basketball, the all-star soccer events and baseball and softball all in Polk County. What's this guy doing in Polk County that we're missing out on? And, you know, and it really started that, you know, but the first thing I ever did, it was funny, is when I was the athletic director at Lakeland High School, uh, my principal, he had, he started me going to the new teacher orientation and meeting them, meeting the new teachers and welcoming them and then giving them tips about, look, you know, the student athletes, you know, have a powerful voice on campus and you're going to have some players, obviously, in your class that are difficult. Um, and I will assist you in, in, you know, facilitating whatever I need to facilitate. But also the power is like, you know, kids these days need to know you love them first before they, before they respect you. And I told him, I said, you know, you teach because that's your job. And those kids are smart enough to know that now. They know you're getting paid to teach as, as, as bad as the salaries are, you know, they still know. But when you go to a volleyball game to see Sarah, who's in your second period class, she also knows that you gave up your free time to take an, in an interest in something she was interested in. And it paid in, in, in the very next day, you know, there's going to be an impact in your classroom because you did that. And, it, and it's, it's so amazing. The little things that we do can be so powerful. And, but, you know, it goes back to, you know, getting involved at the simplest level. And, and I hope you do. Yeah. You, you made me think I did that very same thing with the new teachers, but I'd welcome them. But I'd also say, hey, we've got opportunities in the athletic department, you know, for coaching or stack keeping, things like that. Selling tickets. I need you at a game. Uh, you know? uh, and then for the the new teachers, I, I had a little magic trick that uh, the principals would always let me do. Again, I, I would tell them, 
you know, it's not magic having a great relationship uh, with students, you know, uh, come to the games, you know, let me know if there's anything I can do. Very yeah, cool stuff. Always, yeah. And I always told the teacher, the new teachers, this, I said, I've never known a teacher to lose their job who volunteers for homecoming prom and all the other stuff at night. I said, every teacher that volunteered is still here. I don't know if that means anything or not, but sign up and help out. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm adding that one to my next presentation. That's great. Dan, uh, again, always great to hear from you and uh, and appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to share. Uh, for our new listeners, uh, if they want to get in touch with you and pick your brain a little bit, what's the best way they can get a hold of you? Best way to get a hold of me is 863-661-0647. Again, 863-661-0647. That's my cell phone number. Uh, feel free to call, text uh, anytime, you know, um, cause I would love to connect with you because, you know, I want to learn from you and I hope I can help you in some small little way. Right. Well, we appreciate again, everything you do for our uh, listeners, uh, for listeners, remember the zoom recordings of every single one of our interviews gets uploaded to the educational lady podcast, YouTube channel. Come back again next week for another team building tip with Dan Talbot and just about every day for the educational lady podcast, Dan, we'll see you next time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everybody. Once again, we want to thank all of our sponsors, uh, Final Forms, Snap Rays, Athletic Surveys, Hometown Ticketing, Huddle, Wall of Fame by Vital Signs, Gipper, Sideline Interactive, okay, and Snap Rays, uh, Snap Mobile. Um, we also want to thank our partners, the Global Community of Women in High School Sports and We Coach. Thanks for listening to the Educational AD Podcast and Team Building Tips. We'll see you next time.